Welcome to ScapeTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This video is on the components of a greenhouse propagation system and is the first video in a series on plant propagation. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you. It's mid-August and we have pretty much filled this house at this point. Uh, most of these cuttings are unrooted at this point. A few of them have already have rooted pretty quickly. Just to give you some idea of how quickly uh, some of these leafy evergreens uh, can root, we have uh, here's a tray of August Beauty Gardenias. Absolutely stunningly beautiful roots on them already. And we're here about mid August and these were stuck uh, 627. So we're let's say six weeks uh, and these gardenias are already rooted and uh, we'll probably leave them in here a couple more weeks uh, before we pull them out and acclimate them. The greenhouse is constructed of inch and a half steel tubing spaced four feet apart the entire length of the greenhouse. We definitely recommend them on four foot spacing. Many of the greenhouse companies offer six foot spacing. Check with them to see what the additional cost would be to put additional pieces into your greenhouse. It will last years longer. These cross members on the top of the greenhouse prevent damage from snow loads in the wintertime. The angled bars on the front and the rear of the greenhouse prevent wind loads from the front and the back from collapsing the greenhouse. Here's a view of the front of the greenhouse. The end walls are made out of polycarbonate, which is a very strong plastic, which should last years and years. The front of this greenhouse is about 14 feet at its middle peak. Here's a view down the length of the 72 foot long propagation greenhouse. The greenhouse is covered with two layers of six mil clear plastic and then a shade cloth layer over the top of it to try to keep it slightly cooler in the midsummer months. This greenhouse controller was made by Superior Controls. It's a Sterling 8. The 8 means it will control eight independent valves. The main difference between this clock and a regular irrigation controller is instead of just minutes and hours, this clock will control seconds. So we can turn on a zone every eight minutes for let's say five seconds. We can do that from nine to four in the afternoon. And then from four to eight in the evening, we can do through just three seconds per zone. There's five different programs that can be applied to each of the eight zones. The way I run it, I actually don't uh, have it come on at all uh, after eight in the evening. Uh, there's plenty of humidity in this house after that. Uh, to get these uh, cuttings rooted. Probably would overwater them if I put additional water on them overnight. The water enters the greenhouse from our well in this location. We run well water in the greenhouse. We pond irrigate uh, the rest of the nursery, but this particular space has to be done with well water. It has to be sterile. Uh, you can't throw pond water over the top of unrooted cuttings. You can't assume that your well water uh, is adequate for rooting these cuttings. You want to get your water checked first. It's probably the number one issue in all parts of the nursery business is quality water. Water comes into the greenhouse on a one inch main line and then branches off into eight zones which are wired back to the clock. And each zone is independently controlled by that clock. So if one needs more water than another, it's fairly easy to work on for the most part. This time of year, it's getting into the mid 90s here every day in the afternoon, and we'll have it come on every seven or eight minutes uh, for four, maybe five seconds at the time. I'll back that off if it's cloudy for a few days. This is one of the electric valves that the controller turns on and off. If you look down this line, it has about 25, 26 irrigation heads. Each of these PVC pipes is perfectly level in each zone. The water is waiting right below the irrigation head and so that as soon as the valve turns on water is instantly delivered. There's a thumb screw on this valve that can be run manually. I'm going to turn that slightly to the left and then as you can see each of these heads just lays out a fine mist. Each of these zones overlaps the next zone. This is the uh, mist nozzle that we use. Uh, you can see the water is restricted to a very small point and then it collides with this piece right here and that 
turns it into very small, very, very, very small droplets. The more pressure you have, the smaller the droplets, which is kind of ideal. It's about to come on now. If I can get this thing back on. Okay, here we go. So here it goes. There we go. See, it'll come on. That's about five seconds. This controller turns it on and off, and it'll stay off about eight minutes, and then come back on and do that again. I don't know how easy it is to see, but there's a light film of water on these leaves after that mist comes on. The electricity is supplied to the greenhouse from two 20 amp breakers. The power is divided into a clock that runs the irrigation, a thermostat that runs the shutter and fan system to the cooling system for the greenhouse, and various other fan and electrical controls. The wiring of these electrical components may require an electrician's help. This greenhouse has a thermostat control that controls a shutter and a fan. Uh, it's currently set to 80 degrees. When the temperature in the greenhouse hits 80, uh, it opens up a shutter, turns on a fan, and draws air through the greenhouse. This is the shutter on the front of the greenhouse. I took the cover off the fan so you can see how the fan operates. When it reaches 80 degrees in here today, it'll, the fan will come on, the shutter in the front will come on, open up, allow air fresh air to move through the greenhouse during the day. Here's the greenhouse fan coming on for the first time today. There are four additional fans in the greenhouse that also turn on when the thermostat reaches 80 degrees that assist the large fan in moving air from the front to the back. This is a fairly worn out thermometer at this point, but you can see even before midday in this greenhouse at uh, six feet high, we're already over 90 degrees. So what happens here is we're in a greenhouse that at head height is 95 degrees at midday uh, even with the fans running but the beauty of this system is this little bit of mist that's being laid out on the ground as it evaporates well first of all the water comes out cooler from the well because it's underground and then the second part of this is called evaporative cooling as this water evaporates off the floor it actually cools the air around it those are the basic components of a nursery propagation greenhouse. In the next video, I will show how the cuttings are gathered and placed in the greenhouse. And in future videos, I will show how to propagate not only in a nursery, but also lower cost options for anyone to start their own plants. Thank you for watching.